Hello, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Awesome. I don't have very good service right now, so I was kind of wondering about it. But uh, Happy New Year. Happy New so Year. Nice. <laughs> I, uh, I came across your videos on, on my YouTube feed the other day. Um, I watch a lot of Eckhart Tolle, so I imagine the, al the YouTube algorithm <laughs> found you that way. <laughs> But I, I was very grateful, um, very appreciative um, of, to have those videos there. They, they spoke tremendously to me and um, the permission in a way to, I, with your, your message, I mean, I, I feel like it's, it's very unique in, in, in the fact that you give us permission to, or you say that we can, this is going to be, you know, a painful journey and, and it very much has been. Um, and I think I, a lot of times I've felt that there's something wrong with me or that, you know, that I, I'm not doing it right. Um, you know, if I'm not completely present or in the moment and, you know, if I'm dealing with something, um, dealing with an attachment or something that, so I, I appreciate it. And, and that really, your, your message really spoke. So um, my uh, question is regarding parenting. Um, I don't, and I've watched a lot of your videos, but you've never really talked about uh, having any children. So I'm assuming you don't have any. No. Okay. <laughs> Ironically enough, I think you would you would still give great advice to refer parents, <laughs> even though you're not a parent. Uh, but uh, uh, so I have a nine year old son. Um, you know, he's he's everything to me. Um, And my, my greatest fear is that uh, I'll lose interest in, in being with him. Um, the, the, the bond with a, a child is so strong. That's, that's definitely one of my greatest attachments. And, and uh, you know, the story is so long uh, with him and, and it's it's that's it's going to be something really hard to to see. Um, I mean, I I do kind of see it, um, you know. And I I guess my question is, I, is there is there the possibility that I may not want to be that? I mean, I guess I guess if you're yeah, man. Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, so take what I'm going to say with a grain of salt because I don't have a child and it, it, yeah. does, it does change you in a profound way, I'm sure. And so I don't have that experience in my life. So I can't really give you a... Um, I guess I'm just speaking from how it was letting go of my parents just energetically, uh, letting go of someone. Uh, yeah, so letting go of my loved ones, um, it was painful because I really thought I was losing them. It, it felt as if I was losing them and I had to mourn the whole story. Um, and again, this, this might be different for people you might not have to go through this the way that I did, but there was a really thorough morning here of what I thought was <clears throat> meaningful in the relationship, what I valued, but also what went was my need to be a certain way for them, my need for their approval, my need for them to be happy so I feel safe, the need for them to stay alive so I feel good like all of the expectations on both sides died so there was a freedom for them to be exactly as they are and I think a better example for me would be like I ended up falling in love with someone and I was I was mourning 
kind of the loss of the relationship there. And he was quite dear to me. Um, but I can say now, the freedom for him to be exactly who he is, not needing him to be any way at all, whether he's deeply suffering or not, I can actually be there for him and allow him to suffer or allow him to be in that much pain and just say that I'm here for you and not need yeah. to get better or feel better so that I feel better. So I think that's a massive, yeah. something massive that shifted there. And even I was shocked that there there was there was such yeah no a, yeah I, I see that there was such an expansiveness that i was actually i'm actually okay with my loved ones passing away and not that i wouldn't mourn that as well their body going but i love them unconditionally yeah no it's beautiful um yeah, no, I mean, I, I had, I did have uh, kind of a snapshot experience, um, and so I, I, I did, I came to that realization uh, that I never actually truly loved him, um, I, you know, for who he was. Um, um, you know, I, I never actually unconditionally loved him <laughs> um, until that until that moment um, where I, I kind of had a, a, a brief moment um, with him where I was just completely present and uh yeah, it happened several years ago and that's a topic for a whole nother day <laughs> but um but yeah so I, I i do i do see that um and, and i think that it could lead to me being even a more beautiful father um to love your child unconditionally for once and um you know even, even that hurt when it came up too after a while after i realized that wow i i um, I was basically using my son for this identity and to create this identity. And, um, that's very yeah. normal. So, what's that? That's very normal. I'm that, sorry. That the identity would do that. Yeah. Every identity does that. Well, yeah. Hmm. Well, yeah, it's, so many people in the world confirm it that it's okay you know, that you have this obligation as a father and, and this identity to uphold um yeah I, I get it i get it from everyone and um you know it, it's kind of hard to to know what might happen when everything drops um there's definitely that fear um what will my family think what will they say? How will I react to that? Um, yeah, but, uh, I'm, I'm definitely at a point now where I'm, I'm not adding anything. I'm not adding any more identities, but there's still a lot that needs to be dropped. And, but it's, it, it, it's becoming more and more beautiful. Like you said, um, it, it is painful, but it is, it is, there's beauty in it to see those identities drop and, and to, just have fun and in the moment and be in, <laughs> but I, I I've taken up enough of everyone else's time. Thank you. So, so nice to meet you. Um, and I feel like I know everyone on here already. So I've been watching <laughs> all the videos, um, everyone else is do um, all of your, your, your messages. So thank you. Um, Happy new year. That was a great question. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I want to add as as you're going through your own uh, process of like letting go. Um, for a while, it is possible to lose interest in being the idea or the type of dad you wanted to be for your son. So because energetically it's gonna, there's gonna be shifts in the body. Yeah. So 
there might not be the energy to be that particular dad for your son anymore. But I do think the energy comes back later, but in, in a much more I hesitate to say pure way. Like it, it's not gonna be about an outcome of any kind. It's just gonna happen. Like when you wanna play with your son, it's you're gonna just wanna play with your son and really enjoy it. You know that you're right, because that did happen actually. Uh, um, I moved to Colorado for two years and I was like 10 hours away. So uh, um, it made it quite the challenge to see him. I probably only saw him like four or five times a year. Um, and that he wasn't used to that. Um, but ult ultimately kind of the guilt and shame of not being there. And, and I was shamed for my family for being so far away and not being there as a father for him. Um, ultimately I succumbed to that and moved back. Um, and, uh, so yeah, now, yeah, it's been about eight months since I've moved, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, I, I did feel that, that need to, in being a father. Oh, he disappeared. I, I'm not very active with my parents, let's say. Um, I am a lot <laughs> I'm less active with them, but, but when I do think of them, there's, there's just love for exactly how they are, even though some, you know, some parts of their life is a little fucked up, but like, I can't see it as wrong anymore. And I have, I kind of really don't have any problem with it, but it, I think it would also give me the freedom to say, if I really thought something was fucked up, I would just say my opinion, not to change them, but just to like, or maybe I wouldn't, I don't know. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm not in a good area, but I, I'll let you go. I, I do have to go actually. Um, my friends are waiting for me. We're, we're gonna be going rock climbing. So okay. um, it's a beautiful day. <laughs> oh, cool, yeah. But, uh, I will, I will, I'll stay for the whole meeting next Sunday um, and listen to everyone. I've, I've been listening to all, everyone on, on the videos and it's, it's just, this is a great, great thing that you're doing. So um, I'll yeah. see you next week. Thanks. Enjoy. Yeah. Happy New Year again. Yeah, happy New Year. Hey, um, I did like your intro because I have been like, contemplating similar topics like this feeling of burden of proof and responsibility and uh, like this heaviness which comes with these things and um, and uh, there is interesting like also like uh, language gets easily tricky when you like say like uh, this, well, like does thing these things like ma matter? Like there is in the news, these media in th these big things like climate change and war in Ukraine and um, all these things, and uh, and, and somehow like uh, how how could you say it like like it feels wrong if you say like the war doesn't matter or the like black lives doesn't matter but that's like different things but i like to play and with the words that how those things get easily misunderstood if you say it like like uh and it was interesting, there was once this English professor in this kind of meetings, and he was like explaining like the how how language how this misunderstand this like happen. 
uh, but it, it, it was just interesting thing about like communication that uh, somehow these things is like good to talk about and and interact and there is there are so but but there is easily also this like misunderstand this if you say in the way like things doesn't matter yeah yeah for sure yeah so i i would say um uh the like when there is a sense of responsibility in in this body it will be projected everywhere else so then other people are responsible for their actions and um again when there is that ownership Oh, a lot of harm can happen. Um, and, you know, like, I can still see that stuff and be like, yeah, I would prefer that not to happen. Um, but there's an understanding why it can get so crazy. When there is ownership of the body, the, the intensity of the layers of, of uh, crazy thoughts and if there's belief in the thoughts. Um, so, so when there is like separation, then there could be guilt and shame that comes with a lot of different thoughts. And when that contraction is even tighter and tighter, oh, the thoughts are so much more believable. And, and the thoughts will actually be more disturbing because it's it, there's so much pain there so and then if there's belief in the disturbing thoughts and something happens let's say some harm is done to another body of course of course it's like oh my god I wish that wouldn't happen but there is an understanding here that it's so understandable why people do crazy things if that separate sense of self is there and in so much pain. And then, and then it's understandable that those who are also in pain, but need to feel like they're, they're getting justice for what happened. That's also understandable. You know, they can't just sit back and say, this is okay. There's just too many layers within them too. Um, Yeah, so I think understanding how this sense, separate sense of self can manifest and how contracted and constricted and disturbing the thoughts can get gives you a sense of why things unfold the way they do. But here, when we're talking about the dropping of the sense of ownership of the body, the dropping of the sense of self in the body, then all of that disappears, all of that melts away. Um, it's just a description that the desire to really fix something and to really harm something, it just dissolves. So, and there's such a beauty in that, like, at the so-called end, like that is the piece that everyone's searching for. But when they're when they're so wrapped up in the story of what's right and wrong, then it's you you can't see that at all. You'll just keep fighting. Yes, I I see that that when there is hev heaviness like in this body, then the action is not somehow. Um, what is the word, the pro, pro, productable or uh, that, that there, but, but when there is like no one and some kind of lightness, then there is just like things can unfold in the natural way somehow. But yeah. But it's also interesting, like with the trust in communication with the language that how 
how things get easily tricky and like misunderstood. Yeah. But but yes, it it I I I got the point. Yeah, I think having some wider context of uh, what's being shared, it's not really to address those things, you know, um, in a way. I think it's all relevant, though. I have no problem with addressing that because, yeah, it's part of what's happening here in the appearance of things. Uh if somebody wants to misunderstand, then that that can also happen. That if somebody somebody has this need or somehow this no the interaction that wants to that wants to misunderstand, then then that that's just what's happened. Yeah, I mean the. Um like non-duality or the radical message oh it's it's, it's one of the <laughs> of course the mass majority of people are going to misunderstand it because it's the complete opposite of what separation is and it's it's the same thing it's just taking something like the me too movement or black lives matter or yeah let's say someone takes non non-duality they'll just fight for their own position and say what's right and wrong with it and the fight yeah the fight arises anywhere and everywhere about anything <laughs> yes, and so, sometimes there's even this uh, like because everything is like upside down in the like radical non-duality this communication so i have get touch with people that are around this thing like talking that they also think like the mainstream media like the, it's always just lying that they they are like more into like conspiracy th theories and this kind of thing no it, it it's not common thing but still like like some people think that like because they, in these things like it's everything is so different that what is the mainstream of thinking things so they are also like against the what is the mainstream thing but uh, no i i just no it's it's just something that has come around but yeah. No, it's just interesting, but it doesn't matter really. No, it's very interesting. Yeah. Well, even like there was Richard Sylvester one time said that when he was talking about this thing to one guy, then the other guy said that it sounded like, like have you heard about this uh, lizard people, like the, this David Icke uh -huh. thing, that there is this li li lizard people that they are ruling the world so uh -huh. because this other guy took that this sounded so strange so i have this other thing that sound almost as strange uh -huh. <laughs> it was just just funny yeah what did richard say not he just said that he doesn't want to be around people <laughs> that that he, he didn't want to continue this conversation just he just said that good day and yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's funny yeah i can see how the um uh, the interest or care about addressing that stuff can also just not be there <laughs> yeah yes but thank you yeah thank you